This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we'll be piping buttercream California poppies. It's broken down into steps, so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. Let's get started by making our colors. We're using all American style buttercream and we're gonna make three colors. The first one is gonna be the orange for my petals and then I'm gonna have two more where I'm gonna have a lot less because they're just for some small details. And we're gonna use the following three liquid gel colors. Lemon yellow, sunset orange, and finally, some sky blue. And I've got a little bit of my sky and lemon out on a lid for later. But to start with, I'm gonna use my bottles and I'm gonna do a drop of my orange and I'm gonna do a drop of my lemon as well. California poppies have that kind of tangerine, very citrusy orange kind of vibe to it. So it's kind of like medium intensity with some brightness in it and a little more towards the yellow than the red in terms of the balance of the orange. So we just wanna make sure we get some yellow in there and we don't necessarily need it to be too dark. We just need it to feel bright. So I think that's a good ratio. I like where it's starting out. I just want it to be a little bit deeper. I'm just gonna give it one more of each. I really like a tangerine color. I kind of want to think of like orange, citrus fruit, really kind of grab that vibe. And that's going to be perfect. It's that nice stage where it's starting to look like a great medium tone and that yellow really gives it a bit of brightness. Next, we're going to mix just a little bit of green for our centers. We don't need very much. So we just have like almost I like a big tablespoon in there, no more than an ounce. I'm just going to do a tiny speck in my sky and a couple big ones of that lemon. I want to make kind of a nice citrusy green color. So I definitely want it to be more yellow than blue, but definitely green because I want it to kind of pop out in the center. There we go. So we have a nice kind of bright green that has a little bit, tiny bit of that electric feel, but it's not too intense. It's going to go in the middle of our flowers. And for our final color, we're going to make just a little bit of yellow. And I've got a little bit of buttercream in here. Again, this is going to be for centers, so we don't need a lot. So I'm just going to use some specks because I don't want it to be too intense of a yellow. And I want it to read well against our orange. So if it's even a bit more pastel, that's fine. I just want to make sure the colors are nice and different so they stand out against each other and it doesn't all kind of fade together. We're doing things that are kind of close together on this color wheel, so we want to make sure that they're really nice and different so it doesn't just all kind of blend into one another. And I think that'll be nice. It's a nice kind of clear, bright, lemony yellow, and I think that'll stand out well against the other colors that we made. For this flower, we're going to use three 12 inch disposable decorating bags and they're all fitted directly with the tips. For our orange, we're using a number 125. And for our yellow, we're using a number two. And for our green, we're using a number four. Now let's go over the techniques that we're gonna use for our California poppy. The first are going to be some little support mounds. These are going to be for two of our petals, the first two we do. And we just want to use our bag with our 125, hold it upright. It can actually slant over just a little bit. And we just want to pipe some nice little mounds. And you can see that gives you kind of an oval shape. And it's just something we're going to pipe a petal over. And it's going to give it a nice kind of convex shape 
where it's going to be mounted up. And so it's going to look like it's opening and kind of curling over on itself, which is going to be a great effect for building our flowers. For our petals, we're going to do fan-shaped ones. So when we do these, we want the fat end of our tip towards the center of the nail, the skinny end pointing out, and for the first two we do, the ones that are going to be over our mounds, we're going to start out with that tip kind of flat against the surface. The bag's going to be off towards three o'clock, and we're going to have the bag in that nice flat position. And when we draw our fans, we're going to go out, across, and back. And a little less extreme than this, so we don't end up with too much of a void, but that's the basic shape, and we're going to pipe them over those mounds. For the second two, we're just going to change the angle of the opening of the tip, but pretty much leave everything else the same when we draw them. And we're going to go up a little bit off the surface. So instead of being flat on the surface, we're going to go in between two petals and they're going to act as a support to it. So I can't really do those here, but I can kind of talk about them so that you're prepped for when we do that on our nail later. In our center for our flower, we're going to do a nice green pistol. And we're going to use our number four tip and we just want to start above the surface, bag is straight up and down, give it a squeeze, let it connect, and pull up. And if you need a little more support, and for it just to be a little more present, a lot of times I'll just do three really tight together, and I kind of try to pull them to a single point. And this gives us a nice little kind of complex look for that pistol. And you can see, instead of just being a single one that might kind of uh, wobble a little on you or waver back and forth, getting, doing three of those tight together gives you a more solid, more supported little structure there in the middle. For our stamens, we're gonna use our bag of yellow that has a number two on it. And we're gonna do spikes as well. A little less controlled than what we did with our pistols, but we wanna hold that bag straight up and down, squeeze, let it connect, and then we still want to be squeezing as we're pulling away. And the harder you squeeze, the longer these will be. And we just want to do a lot of nice little kind of hairy spikes. They have a lot of stamens in the center. So basically when we do these, we're just going to go all the way around that pistol and do one or two rows so it has some nice frilly stamens there in the center. And we have that nice pop of both yellow and green in the middle. Now let's talk about how we're going to put all those techniques together to make our California poppies. The first thing we're going to do is pipe our two support mounds. We want to do them opposite each other on our flower nails, so think like head and feet, and we want to leave a little space in between. You need enough room in there for the pistil, the stamens, and the base of your petals. So it's going to be about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, inch and a half distance between the two. Then we want to take our same bag because we're using our bag with our 125 that's got our orange in it and we're going to pipe two of those fan shaped petals over top of those mounds and when we do it if we need to we can rock the tip sorry rock the nail forward and back so towards us as we're working and then away as we're finishing to help us lay that petal on and that's just so we can get it over the mound pull it and then back and get it to really lay on top and it's really going to give us that kind of nice convex shape that will really look like these flowers are opening up and we'll do that more and talk about it more when we're actually working on the nail to show you that motion but it's really simple you're piping your same support fan and as you go you're just going to rock the nail towards you and then back as you're finishing so it's a nice soft easy motion and it'll help put that petal on in a really natural way for you. Next, all we're going to do is change the rotation of the opening of the tip. So instead of kind of being flat against the surface while we're piping, we're going to rock it, right, or rotate it so that it's pointing up for us. And then we're going to do two petals in between the first two we did. So maybe think about them like arms, right? You had your head, your feet, and now we're putting on our arms. And we're going to do the same kind of fan shape but because the opening of the tip is pointing up, these are going to go up for us. And we're gonna kind of wedge those in. And that's gonna give us a look like two of the petals are kind of flopping over and two of them are upright. And it's gonna help create the illusion of a nice trumpet shaped flower for us. And finally, we're gonna finish it up by first putting that green pistil in the center and then going 
all the way around with our stamens. And if you've got any gaps or holes there in the middle, just make sure you fill them in with stamens. So just go around, do one row, do two, do a third, or fill in any spots you need to, and make them nice and long and hairy and kind of frilly so they have a great natural look to them. So we've got our bag ready to go, and we're gonna start practicing on our nail. I'm using a three inch flower nail. Since this is kind of a bigger blossom, it's probably a little bit too big for my two inch nail. And I wanna leave a gap in the middle here. So a little void in the center. So I'm gonna start by piping my support mounds. So I wanna start above the center, just a little bit, so that when I pipe that mound on top, and then the second one on the bottom, there'll be a little gap in the middle. And if you got a little too close, you can always remove just a little bit for yourself. Next, we're going to line our bag up. We've got the tip. So the fat end is touching, the skinny end is pointing out, and we're gonna be as flat as we possibly can. You might have to rock the back, back end of the bag up just a little bit so that you don't run into your own support mound, but we just wanna start there, pull out, I'm gonna rock the nail forward towards myself and then back. And you'll see it leaves a little bit of a void in the middle, but because the mound is orange, you don't really see it. And we're gonna end up putting stamens on top of it, so I don't wanna worry too much about those. So we're gonna pipe our second petal, and this gives us a good angle to look at the first one. And you can see when we rocked our nail, it really allowed us to lay that frosting over top of that mound and get a nice curve shape to that petal. So we're gonna do the same thing with the second one. Fat in towards the center, skinny end out, adjust the back end of the bag if you need to, and rock your nail towards you as you pull away, pipe across, and then rock it back to level as you go back to center. And you can see that gives us nice little curved puffy petals. For our second set of petals, we're gonna hold the bag basically the same. We're just gonna rotate the opening of the tip so it's pointing straight up. I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna push out, draw my fan shape and pull back. So we wanna go out, really let that fan kind of fall in there and then pull back in. And you can see that gives us a nice petal that's kind of cupped up for us and wedged in between and supported by those first two. You'll notice it also kind of fills in some of our gaps for us. I'm just going to turn around and do a second one in the opposite direction on the other side. And there we go. We're gonna start finishing our flowers by putting the pistil in the center. So I wanna give myself one spike, two, and then a third, all pulling towards a central point. Now we're gonna finish up our flower by pulling a bunch of hairy little yellow stamens. And we wanna make sure we start out right next to our green, pull a bunch of them, And don't be afraid to let them flop over and really kind of travel onto that orange. They've got a lot of little spikes in the centers and you can see it's a great way if you had any little gaps still in the petals that we're showing through to cover those up quickly. And I usually like to go around once or twice and then just give it a look and see if it needs any anywhere to kind of even it out the distribution. But I think that looks lovely. And then we have a beautiful California poppy that's a nice, bright, festive, and cheerful addition to any cake. And it has a great kind of citrusy themed color palette. If you liked this tutorial and you want to check out some more, like maybe a traditional style poppy, we have another uh, video in our flower series on regular poppies. And we also have a great 3D poppy cake as well to give you some extra practice with these beautiful blossoms. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School.
If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.